because when I saw it, I thought, I was like, yeah. I thought that that is definitely, you know, the, the stop hunter broker. Okay. Uh, ah, yeah, found it. Don't worry. Okay. Found, it. Okay, found it. Yeah, found it. Here we go. That's it. Yeah, drop like a hundred uh, hey. dollars or something. Like. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. That's on the hour time frame. Yeah. And that's on the hourly. Oh my lord. That. And again, this is so, so. So let me bring out my pen. So for those of you who don't understand, that is so terrible. Yeah, it is it is it really is? For those of you who don't understand liquidity, and uh, there there are three things. I say three. There are the, there are the, these are the main things that I believe to be true of of um, of of why the markets move. Yeah. First is value can you guys see my, my my pencil by the way yeah yeah value the second is liquidity yeah d-i-t-y right and the third thing is which is a function of liquidity i guess is the zero sum game which is basically for someone to win Someone else has to lose. Zero sum game. The money is transferred from the loser to the winner. So, why markets move in the way that they do is because um, you know you get you get obviously you have orders, right? So you have uh, more buy orders than sell orders, more sell orders than buy orders. Yeah. Um, now at certain points, yeah especially in, in a market where everybody is long, everybody and their mother knows to buy gold now. Um, so, so when it comes to, when it comes to this, right? So from a value perspective, everybody is long. There's a whole load of buy orders, buy, 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 buy. But for every buy order, there needs to be what? A sell order. There needs to be someone on the other side of your transaction. Now, if everyone's buying on their brokers, yeah, then, um, the broker is the one that's losing at the moment as prices are going higher. So, so if there's not enough sell orders, there's not enough sell orders to facilitate the buying that 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 traders want to do. Yeah, retail traders want to do. Then it the, the the buy or the sell orders are going to be either above them at the market, above the market, or below the market. And if there's not enough above the market, then it's going to search for it below the market and this is where i guess the zero sum game comes in into into play because the transfer of wealth between the the winner who was sam at the time <laughs> yeah you know sam was doing really well and then all of a sudden you get this spike it's pretty much taken everybody else out yeah so sam along with everybody else's stop loss has been cleared the money's transferred to the broker yeah only those who haven't moved their stock. Those, yeah, those who haven't moved their stock, yeah, unfortunately. Um, and at the same time, then that provides enough liquidity for them to, you know, move, you know, continue the market to the upside. Because what happens also as well is that it draws in traders to the short side. There were traders now within this hour who were doing what? Pressing sell. Yeah, pressing sell. So then it allows the financial institutions to do what? Buy for cheaper. They were buying at 15 you know, hundred rather than buying at sixteen hundred. So there's 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 lots of things going on within this, but the, from a liquidity perspective, yeah, this is why these things happen. These liquidity spikes happen, and it's horrible. It's unfortunate, but that's just it's it's the way that it has to happen. You know, the the, the markets have to happen. That's why stop hunting is such a I guess a powerful strategy in itself because once you can spot the stop hunts and this happened on the 26th of march yeah it's the 26th of march let's go and look at the chart from the 26th of march all right from the 26th 26th was here yeah so the spike out there and look but look where prices have gone since they were a lot higher so when so when you get a stop hunt yeah, and a, and, a, and, a, and a known stop hunt, it's an indication potentially where the market could want to go. But we increase the odds, you know, the, the chances of us being in the right direction because 
Stop plans can happen in both directions. You know what I mean? It can happen to the upside or to the downside because it's, it's just a continual search for where the liquidity is, if you know what I mean. So, um, but we knew, you know, that in a risk off environment, what should happen ultimately to gold. And this happened to you here, but there's probably a few traders probably below that level there. If we zoom in, maybe to like a one hour time frame, you can probably see that this was an area where you can see a bit of a stop on that happened there. Potentially more of an iceberg order, etc. There was a bit of a ranging market there. There, traders hoping that they would trade. Um, maybe price would have been long from there. Lots of stop losses below here. Brilliant, and then get the move higher. You see what I'm saying? So the market will continue to look and pull back for stop losses on where they are. You know, and then can continues to go higher. But it's unfortunate, Sam. That is very, very unfortunate. And what, so what happened with that? So if what I'm saying resonates with you, why not check out trading180.com? There is a selection process to trade my supply and demand zone for X strategy. I'm only looking to work with uh, individuals with the right mindset, you know, who are hard working as well. So um, check that out and access really for less than one pound a day. This Some of the strategies in here are not for beginners. So if you don't know what supply and demand is, please check out all of my supply and demand videos. I have hundreds of videos on YouTube, so you can check that out first. Um, guys, take care and until the next video, have a good one.